thank the moderator. Uh, bonjour, good morning in Bordeaux, France. Thanks ECOG Selection Committee for organizing this market focus session. Thanks everyone for attending today's event. My name is Frank Chang from South Photonics in California. Sorry to miss you all on site. I will focus on discussing cloud data center interconnect technologies. It uh, especially focus on the evolution and the challenges to eight energy optics and beyond. First for outline, I will review the current market situation for client optics and the large volume shaping at 180 and 480. I will cover technology directions, active industry developments, especially 280 plan for beyond 480. Then I will discuss deployment challenges facing current 480 pluggable optics for new requirements on lower latency and the OTU support, for example. I will also take several slides to look into key emerging technologies. We will discuss pluggable transceiver route map and the CPO status, it, especially to enable 400G plan with the next generation DHP and, uh, and forward error correction devices. In the end, I will finalize my talk with key takeaways. Back to OFC in June and the CIOE this week. There are a lot of discussions about traffic growth. I believe it's the same thing for this ECOG. This slide takes the Google network as an example. There are two key growth drivers for data center applications. We clearly see from the left plot, the DC tra uh, traffic continues to grow rapidly. The cloud host traffic, excluding machine learning traffic, increased 235x from 2011 to 2021 for last decade. Each year, growth rate exceeds over 40 to 50%, estimated by light counting. This is pretty amazing. On the other hand, new emerging machine learning use case drives more exp exponential traffic growth, which further increase the DCN uh, bandwidth with much higher, definitely with a much higher rate. And we see double year over year initially from 2012 to 2016. This growth rate in return drives significant demand on optics. First, let's discuss the general uh, Ethernet market Total Ethernet revenue project to about 7 billion markets by 2025. Cloud transceiver account for 69% of total Ethernet revenue currently for 2019 will grow to 75% for 2025. From 2020 to 2025, cloud revenue growth will be driven primarily by 200G and 400G demand. I should mention 800G is currently under development. If you pay attention at OFC, at least seven companies demo their products. Initial 8 energy switch ports does not require 8 energy MAC, so mainly for breakout applications targeting toward lower 100G or 400G cost. So let's examine the current 100G and 400G deployments with Ethernet markets. We can see clearly for largest cloud hyperscale data centers dominates the initial 100G and 400G shipments. Hyperscale data centers definitely install optics much faster in their data centers, followed by rest of tier two and tier three cloud users. Google, AWS, and Microsoft ramp up the 400G quickly until 2025. So I'd like to mention Facebook adopt 200G data rates in terms of KSP56, as it likes to keep a radius of 128x for switching networking. From an equipment perspective, what we need to investigate is the continue, continuous growth of switching capacity. Basically, if you see from the plot, 
follow Moore's law to double capacity almost every two years. Currently, 400G plug hole transceivers get into volume deployment from 2020, mainly for 12.80 switch. Today, the industry is working on 800G to populate 25.60 switch using 800G transceivers. Since OFC 2021, there are a lot of 800G uh, discussions, as you know, and many module one uh, module, module one they're starting to demo and sample the 800 solutions. Plug bolts have got 1.60 solutions to support one RU 51.2 switch. So quite likely the real battle between CPO and the plug bolts will start from 102.40 switch. So I'd like to just to emphasize. CPO used to pr promise uh, to kick in at 51.2T but seems to get pushed further out until 102.40 switch, which may appear in market around 2025 to 2026 for real battlefields against the pluggables. This table summarized how the four largest hyperscale data centers will proceed next in their data centers. Clearly, uh, Google will migrate from two times 200G to two times 400G, then to two by 800G, that is 1.60 using plug optics. There's no roadmap to CPO by Google. AWS continues to deploy four by 100G breakouts today to eight by 100G or four by 200G at next, and then to likely four by 400G around 2025 to 2026. And AWS also did not announce the CPU plan. So Microsoft and the Facebook proposed to introduce co-package optics for either 800G or 1.6T for the similar time frame, but quite likely use pluggable optics for 800G as well. So let's go back to the basics. This slice is another way to show evolution of optical I.O. interface, service I.O. and the module form factors. For different generation of switch evolution, we see optics undergo uh, three um, transitions from 25 gigabaud NRZ to PAM4, then transition to 50 gigabaud in PAM4, and last to 112 gigabaud PAM4 in near future. From 30s front, we talk about 25G NRZ to uh, 50 gig PAM4, then to 112G PAM4 30s, and at the last to 224 gig uh, um, PAM4 30s in near future. For the famous the switch roadmap, which dictates the 30s and the optical IOs, electrical and the module speed to double every two to three years. We can see the transition from 50 gig PAM4 to 100 G PAM4 and now going to 200 G PAM4 based on per wavelength. 400 G started to ramp up deployment since last year for one uh, 12.80 switches. Initial 800 G will start from 25.60 switches, primary, fo primary focus on uh, breakout applications as we talk about for, for extension to 100G and 400 and, and 400G. 224G PAM4 service will be introduced to enable the transition to 51.2T switches from around 2020 to 2024. This, this table lists the option, um, the optical pluggable transceiver options at a different rates. From 100G and below is dominated by NRZ, a signal with direct detection. From 50 gig, 200 gig, and 400G, PAM4 established to be the primary choice for signal modulation. On the other hand, a current is starting to attach, attack the shorter distance for 80 kilometers of, uh, at 100G and 400G. 
For eight energy and 1.60, we expect time four will start dominating short distance up to 10 kilometers. Possibly we may be able to see current for beyond 10 kilometers. Another important factor to consider is the power consumption. 100G stays at less than 3.5 watts per 100 gig. 400G modules at 10 to 12 watts with potential to 8 watts. We can expect 8 energy to close to 2 watts per 100 gig. That is 20 picojoule per bit. To introduce 200G plan, further power uh, dissipation could be possibly by reducing 8 lines to 4 lines. So next important uh, factor to discuss is uh, optics cost. Currently, industry expects close to one gig, one dollar per gig at, at cost target. This is the famous uh, um, one uh, one dollar per gig target. We can see clearly, 400 is close to this goal and expect 800 should be below this target. With 200 per, per lambda, DR4 and FR4 will push the cost even lower. This is the whole motivation by industry to de develop 200G per lambda ecosystems. I'd like to mention there are some other requirements to have client optics support OTU interface like FlexO short range interfaces. FOIC interface def uh, defines at 100G, 200G, 400G rates aligned well with the Ethernet interface for reuse of client optics. Especially, I should say, the FOIC leverage the same KP4 uh, Red Solomon 554, 514 FEC codes as Ethernet. In this table, we especially pay attention to FOIC 1.4 interface for 100G OSIP and the FOIC 4.8 for 400G QSB DD interface. 8 energy support is still work in progress and not yet defined by 802.3 and ITU to address the clients and the line side interfaces. The question could be the rate of OTU, OTU CN race or continues with FOIC. One more requirement I'd like to emphasize is latency. We see many latency, we see many latency sensitive applications like HPC, cloud computing, AI, 5G front house, for example. Generally, we see digital DSP dominate, dominate uh, PAM4 for larger and high performance applications. But there, there are some issues associated with large latency and long initialization time because of DSP converging takes much longer time. For data centers, AOC and, and, and DAC starting to, uh, to adopt a DSP-free architecture. It typically allows specs dominated by, um, uh, defined by open, open IMSA. Other areas like some 5G front house and mid house Low latency variation is uh, um, prerequisite uh, uh, to allow uh, network systems uh, synchronizations. From the, the, from the table comparisons, analog saves over 100 nanoseconds for each connection over DSP. For example of Malinox, from servers to server connections with six, six links. Optical modules using DSP contribute to about 40% of the total latency budget, but while analog solutions is only 8%. Another implementation complexes come from management interface as the CMS by itself becomes much more com complicated to address complexity of optical Ethernet modules. CMIS will, ad will address starting up sequencing and managing the data path data machine and the module state machines. And also clear out T 
PX output readiness indication and provide receiver output status indication and also support full independent breakout parts. Historically, single line modules like SIP28 and SIP56 use SFF8472 and the quad modules like um, KSIP28 and KSIP56 use SF8636. Both will merge to CMIS from now on as uh, um, defined by the MSA. That's the that's decision already happened. KSIPDD MSA posted the CMIS with three versions so far. 800G will start from the latest CMIS 5.0 from, from uh, Scratch. One um, one um, generation for the op, um, for the one G plug for optics. I'd like to say optical innovations never stop for low cost and lower power using small form factors. For next generation one G optics, one G LR four KSP twenty eight still dominate the major volume using four lasers for many years. And then now generation. And now transition to single 100 lambda uh, transceivers based on one single laser using PAM4. The next generation will migrate to smaller form factors like SIP112 for single 100 electric line in the host. The similar for next generation 400G, it is going to uh, from KSPDD to KSP112. Power dissipation will reduce to almost half from 12 watts using 60 nanometer DSP to 6 watts using 7 or, or even 5 nanometer CMOS. I should mention during OFC uh, 21, we have the first industry live demo for HNAG 2 by FR4 dual LC uh, in OSP form factor. The modules is based on 8 by 100 electrical in, in from host and optical out to the line to the line side. I'd like to mention OFC 2021 South Photonics participate the industry first 800G switch demonstration at the system level by Arista Networks using 800G pluggable transceivers based on 100G per host electrical line. Two by 400G FR4 OSIP is the industry first to support uh, dual LC uh, duplex connectors for, le for legacy fiber installment base. The company also sampling the industry um, inst um, first 800G DR8 OSIP to support dual MPO receptacles to be back uh, to, to be uh, backward compatible to 2 by 400G DR4 breakouts. I should say. This innovation uh, generates great savings and flexibilities for data center and the telecom users to better leverage their existing fiber deployment base for using either LC or MPO 12 connectors. Here is an example of the, of the 800G modules. The left side shows the OSIP 2 by FR4 using dual LC. The right shows the OSIP DR8 um, 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 using dual MPO 12. The design greatly enables the key initial 800G applications for breakouts. I should say 800G optics happened much earlier than 800G Ethernet, but as you know, so far IEEE still is struggling under pressures to define how 800G Mac will look like. DSP retirements from each vendor shows unique optical and electrical performance attribute, attributes. And it's challenging in, in signal integrities to adopt the host interface using 100G plan. There are full of breakout applications either based on 2 by 400G DR4, FR4, or 8 by 100G FR1, LR1. This causes issues for Siemens compl uh, compliance as Siemens becomes much complex for breakouts yielding up to as many as eight data, um, data pass data machines to manage. 
Now let's consider the pluggable root map. I borrow this plot from Crystal to discuss the pluggable root map for uh, next several years. This is the where the debate of coherent with uh, um, against uh, direct detections focus on from 400G to 800G until 3.2T. 400G they are pluggable transceivers had got initial market acceptance in terms of KSPDD or OSP from factors, likely from end 2021 this year. This is the first time in industry coherent detections is used to address the data center interconnects with the pluggable optics. For 400G, time four addressed the reaches up to 40 kilometers with the ER8 before run, uh, uh, ramping out of gas in performance. So that's why uh, several wonders is in production for ER8, like uh, South Photonics. For next speed, 800G coherent pluggable solutions will try to target LR1 10 kilometers. It is currently under development by OF. It is foreseeable there will be a battle between 800G LR8 using low cost eight lasers and 800G LR1 using more power hungry DIP by coherent. 112 gig gigabot enables 200G per lambda with PAM4 to build 1.60 transceivers using eight lasers but hard to scale further beyond 3.2D. Not sure if this is end of the pluggable if we, uh, without further innovations. To emphasize my point, emerging 800G current pluggable solutions could, e could either enter um, intra data centers for uh, 10 kilometers and beyond. Emerging optoelectronic technologies, especially 200G, um, per wavelengths could play a key role to enable 1.60 for next level of serial data race. Let's come to compare 200G per lambda applications. We consider three solutions from 400G uh, evolution to 800G inside data centers. Currently, 400G DR4, FR4, and LR4 use 100G PAM4 optics based on 8 to 4 30s from 7 nanometer CMOS. Total module power is 10 watts. To build 800G, first generation based on 8 by 100G 8 to 8 30s with no change in optical analog bandwidth. Lower optical transceiver cost is a major driver for using 4 by 200G with four, laser, with four lasers against. 8 by 100G using 8 lasers. This analog bandwidth for optics will increase from 40 to about 65 gigahertz. Of course, advancements in, in the DAC, ADC, DSP, and optical component technologies have to be on pace to support 200G per lambda. Where are the challenges? 200G per lambda face significant performance and the packaging challenges. Analog bandwidth is critical for all over the place from DSP to DAC to driver to laser modulation in the TX side and the PD, TA, ADC from receiver side. So analog bandwidth is not the whole picture. We need to pay attention to other parameters for DAC need to pay attention to sampling rate, ENOP, and the electrical SNR. We need to also pay special attention to peaking and the group delay and, and the electrical reflections from example above. A minor changes in wire bounds to EML, for example, could be extremely sensitive to signal quantities. To summarize, 200G um, per lambda will be impacted by uh, TX analog bandwidth limitation and the electrical reflections. Receiver PD and the TA noise, nonlinearities, and analog, analog uh, bandwidth limitations. DAC ADC analog bandwidth and sampling rates. 
also from fiber side, the fiber chromatic dispersion. So normally uh, dispersion penalty scales quadratically with, uh, with boundaries. Another factor is uh, PMD called the um, polarization mode dispersion. First order effects come from differential group delays. The first criti uh, the critical part for 200G plan is later modulation. So OFC provides a very nice workshop for state of the art, later structures and the characteristics. To achieve 200G uh, parameter, we have several choices. EML, DML, Indian phosphate, Mark Zander, silicon photonics, Mark Zander, and recently lithium orbit and thin film format. Indian phosphate Mark Zander is not listed here as it is primarily uh, popular for coherent IQ modulators. Indian phosphate replaced bar-K lithium orbit for IQ modulators at coherent for higher and higher performance long haul trans uh, transmissions. Re, uh, um, report over 192 gigabytes, but cost much higher if DML and the EML can finish the job. For the status of each modulation, 50 gigabytes EML is in volume production now. So 112 gigabytes is demonstrated with the bandwidth of 60 gigahertz with the um, uh, EMI bias of negative 1.2 volts. This is pretty, uh, pretty amazing. It requires to apply very short wire bonding packages for single integrity. For DMLs, 25 gigabyte EMLs for NRD and PAM4 is in production. 50 gigabytes uncooled DMLs is under development, potential, um, potentially capable for 112 gigabyte um, with some risks of quantity concerns. Besides higher linearity, current, uh, current, uh, current driver remains another challenge. Silicon photonics makes success in, in coherence first and for client optics for short reach around 500 meters. 50 gigabyte the DR4 start into production of the EML version. Ring modulators using push pull configurations for different driver, differential drivers, higher way pi with external drivers is used. 112 gigabyte demonstrate, uh, demonstrate key parameters, including um, bandwidth of 60 gigahertz, propagation loss still high uh, at 3.4 dB, and also higher uh, driving voltage about five watts. As we know, there are always fiber coupling issues. Last, I'd like to mention emerging, material, emerging materials with thin film, lithium bit or insulator, uh, MDM. So the benefits is lower, uh, lower coupling, coupling loss. It's about one dB um, per facet. OFC 20, uh, 20, 21 uh, reports the post deadline paper shows 112 gigabyte operations for bandwidth um, exceeding 100 gigahertz and a low uh, driving voltage of 1.2 volts. To look into the receiver side, two kinds of photodiodes are available. Common pin photodiode is made by three, uh, three five materials. 53 gigabyte surface emitting pin uh, photodiode is in production. It can be integrated into lens a small uh, active aperture is required for 112 gigabytes, trade off with optical coupling. Demonstration using 112 gigabytes operation was done with for 70 gigahertz and the responsivity is 0.7 at O band. I should mention to apply advanced packaging to TA becomes critical. Germanium pin is another common detector to use together with, uh, with, uh, with SIFO. It is good to be coupled into waveguide, so it's uh, compatible with SIFO process. It is report Gen 1 of 30 um, gigahertz and Gen 2 can go as high as 50 gigahertz. So 112 gig operations are reported for 800G DR8 modules. Last, I'd like to mention TIA is more critical to work with either 
detectors. TIA requires peaking to achieve over 60 gigahertz bandwidth. And it is very challenging for TIA to manage low thermal noise under much higher bandwidth at the same time. Another critical uh, building blocks is DAC and ADC, especially for um, implementa implementation of digital DSP ASICs, similar to either coherent or direct detections. We need to maintain higher analog bandwidth and, and resolution. DAC and ADC have three key parameters, analog bandwidth, effective uh, number of uh, bits, ENOP, and, and the sampling rates. ENOP is a measure of the dynamic range of ADC. Sampling rate is the speed for ADC to sampling an analog input, for DAC to sending out an, um, an analog output. For higher speed, at least the one sample per bit is required. For from the technical prediction on the left plot, analog bandwidth like limited baud rate to 130 gigabytes in two years. Today, so we are talking about ENOB of 6.5 to 7 bits, analog bandwidth of 45 to 55 gigahertz, and 112 uh, giga um, sampling samples per bit. In three to four years, we are limited to analog bandwidth of 70 gigahertz. One thing I'd like to mention, current uh, leveraged uh, more uh, deep process node, um, a deep process node for low, low power because of a uh, single lens, if, if you can see from the, the right plot. The DSP gap is much close with five nanometer CMOS from the, the, the same uh, right, uh, the right plot. Another key parameter to achieve 200G lambda is the receiver DSP block. DSP is among central part of 112 uh, gigabyte 30 ASICs, especially with the increasing baud rate. Uh, DSP function becomes much more complex. It may have to use up to 30 FFE tabs to compensate channel distortions because of single, single node uh, inter integrity. Also, DSP converging algorithm can include nonlinear nine, nine equalization to keep optimize, uh, optimizing further link performance. Typically, DSP occupies over 30% of the bomb cost and 60% of the total power dissipation inside the module. Industry, in fact, three nanometer CMOS nodes are required for 112 gigabyte DSP. For technical feasibilities of 200G per lambda, this slide shows the initial evolution of Mark and the EML transmitters. We can see that time four provides better performance. For Mark Zander, receiver sensitivity is better than minus nine dBm. For EMLs, receiver sensitivity is better than 8.5 dBm. We use the prefect BR threshold reference at one e minus three. So this kind of receiver performance should be able to exceed uh, link budgets for two kilometers and uh, 10 kilometers. We should not forget um, um, the, dis uh, the dispersion impact on link performance for 200 deep lambda. 112 gigabytes sh uh, show much more sensitive to uh, um, chromatic dispersion as we already talked. With increasing baud rate at 112 gigabytes, dispersion penalty decreases rapidly to the roof without no um, uh, tolerance. Consider four scenarios with dispersion range. FR4 CWDM, LR4-6-10 CWDM, and, and LR4 LAN WDM. So using the same criteria, like LR4-10. CWDM limits optical reach to two kilometers for PAM4. So that's, that is four by 280 FR4. I should mention that to achieve 10 kilometers, we need to narrow down the wavelength spacing. To maintain the same dispersion penalties, we propose the narrow one LAN WDM using 400, 480, um, uh, 400 gigahertz spacing at O-band. And this is well 
under discussion at IEEE 802.3. At last, I'd like to give a comparison of eight energy current against the PAM4 solutions for 10 kilometers. Compare eight energy current with one lambda and four by two energy with four lambda. PAM4 solutions show much better in DSP, uh, DSP size and power. For others, eight energy current will not be uh, backward compatible to current 400G PAM4. Besides, no support parallel optics modules, no support to breakouts, no synergies no with copper DAC and AOC applications. Basically, how current to play well inside data centers is still very questionable to, unless PAM4 run out of gas. I'd like to summarize my talk for key takeaways. The industry still observe exponential uh, growth of data center traffic, which continues to push for higher interconnect connection data rates to reduce the cost per bit and energy per bit. 400G transceivers take off from 2020. Clearly, 800G pluggable is back to get in initial volume deployments from 2022 to 2023 timeframe. Going forward to 1.60, Pluggables have got clear solutions to supply sufficient connectivities to support the requirements of 51.2T switches in a one RU box. I should emphasize 200G per, per lambda could play key roles to bring the industry into next level of serial data rates. We look into the, the enabling building blocks already. Emerging 800G current pluggable solutions could, uh, could enter inside data centers for 10 plus kilometers in next three to five years. But how far current can go deeper into short reach is a big question mark. Thanks for attending. Look forward to a su successful ECOC event. Should you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you very much.